As we have learned more about the Green Lantern Corps, we've got to meet more and more exciting new members from out in the cosmos, and a surprising amount of human recruits from Earth besides. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. Today we'll be getting to know some of these Green Lanterns and what they are capable of a bit better as we count down the top 10 most powerful Green Lanterns. Let's get counting. Number 10, Simon Baz. Simon Baz is one of the newer Green Lanterns, though that feels a little bit weird to say now, as he was first introduced in 2012, and we've definitely had quite a few new ones pop up since then. Also, 2012 was almost 10 years ago, wow. Before he was a Green Lantern, he was an engineer turned street racer turned car thief due to the result of the financial crisis. Due to his Muslim origins, being a Lebanese American following the tragedy of 9-11, he had to deal with many people judging him and his family based on his background and how he looked. Because of this, when he was apprehended for attempting to steal a car, he was suspected of being involved in much larger schemes related to national security, and was therefore sent to Guantanamo Bay. Fortunately, it was at that time that he was chosen by his ring to become a Green Lantern. Even while dealing with a ring that was programmed by Sinestro and not really knowing what he was doing because he was super, super new at the time, he still managed to create constructs when he first came up against the Justice League following a misunderstanding. I think it's pretty impressive that he was even able to make constructs because I feel like that would be a lot. Number nine, Jessica Cruz. I mean, Jessica has to be one of the most powerful Green Lantern at this point, especially given, well, everything that she's been through. Jessica started off inheriting the power ring of Earth 3, which was in itself a story. It actually took control of her itself, forcing her to become its host against her own will. In the end, Batman helped her to regain control of herself by sharing with her his experience of finding strength in great moments of tragedy, where he himself had felt like a victim. Jessica would then train with Hal Jordan to gain a better sense of how to use her ring, but only briefly, as Hal was kind of soon after called the space. That was when Simon and Jessica were left alone together with a battery between them to share as they attempted to figure out how to best be superheroes and lanterns together. Hal basically forced them to become partners and he was like, you two need to figure this out. Jessica also struggles with severe anxiety, which is one of the reasons Simon was kind of frustrated to be paired up with her, at least to begin with. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you love space cops, green lanterns as much as I do, please be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Also comment below, subscribe, hang out, check out some other videos, you know. Just chill with us for a bit. How are you doing? Put your feet up. Feel good. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. You know, just be cool and hang out with us. We like you. We like you. Stick around. Number eight, Alan Scott. A lot of comic fans may think of Alan Scott as being one of the weakest Green Lanterns because of, well, his weakness to wood, but don't let that fool you. Although his weakness to wood is pretty silly, Alan Scott is still an extremely powerful and unique Green Lantern. He was the first Green Lantern and has since had himself more separated from the general Space Cops Green Lantern core in terms of how he operates and how his powers work. I mean, initially when he was introduced with Earth 2, Alan Scott, he wasn't even really connected to the Green Lantern Corps. Because back then, we didn't have to do origin stories and really make everything make sense, but here we are now. Alan Scott's powers actually come from a magical entity that was once the prisoner of the Guardians of the Universe, known as the Starheart. At least if we're going with the new Earth story, which here, we're going with the new Earth story because I like it the best. The Starheart ended up on Earth and saved Alan's life. He wore the entity like a ring, which for many years was the source of his power and adopted the mantle Green Lantern. Alan has also managed since then to merge with his own battery that he fashioned out of the Starheart. Basically, he fashioned a battery and a ring out of it. In merging with his battery, though, he became even more powerful as he became the power source for his own ring which is pretty cool. You gotta respect Alan Scott, that's what I think. Number seven, Kilowog. Kilowog is the main recruiter for the Green Lanterns and is also their head trainer. He pretty much trains all of the new recruits and with good reason, as he's a very powerful and capable Green Lantern. Kilowog is so powerful that back in the New Earth continuity when his homeworld, Bolivox Vic, was first destroyed and he was on it, although his ring only instinctively protected him, he actually used his willpower and his ring to capture the billions of life energies of the citizens on his homeworld, storing them within his ring until he could find a new and safe world to release them on. 
Unfortunately, his homeworld and family would still later be destroyed by Sinestro even after he saved them, but it was still an impressive feat for him to have saved them all the first time around. But it's very sad that they all died anyways. That sucks. Kilowog has a sad story, friends. It's sad. Number six, Sinestro. Sinestro, before Hal Jordan showed up, was celebrated as the most powerful of all the Green Lanterns. That is, of course, until Hal exposed him as the villain he truly was. Despite the fact that Sinestro is now considered a villain and is the head of his own core, the Yellow Lantern-based Sinestro Corps, he also deserves respect for just how crazy powerful he is and what was as a Green Lantern. There is a reason that fellow Lanterns considered him to be the best. I mean, he even had to go back to being a Green Lantern for a time because he was so skilled and the Guardians needed him. Even though at that point he was already a leader of the Sinestro Corps and he was very happy as such. He was like, I don't really want to go back to being a Green Lantern. And they're like, well, we're the Guardians of the Universe. You have no choice. Also, every time I say Guardians of the Universe, I've been wanting to say Guardians of the Galaxy today. Obviously, I need more Guardians of the Galaxy in my life. I'm not sure what's happening to me. Hopefully I haven't and I won't say Guardians of the Galaxy in this video because that would make no sense. Guardians of the Galaxy are not applicable to Green Lanterns. Not at all. No connection. Totally different publishers. Number five, Joe Moline. Joe probably has some of the greatest potential of all the Green Lanterns we have ever met. She was given a very special kind of ring, one that doesn't actually need a battery but can self-charge on its own. Of course, its charging is slow going and Joe isn't a master of it yet, but still it's very impressive. It's like, we're talking like Alan Scott coolness. In Future State, we gotta see a glimpse into Joe's possible future where she is a member of the Justice League and also becomes proclaimed as the greatest detective in the entire universe, which is pretty huge. Joe might not be there yet, but she shows so much promise in terms of what she can accomplish with her willpower, even just from what we've seen in Far Sector, that I think she deserves this spot, especially considering how powerful she'll likely go on to become. I'm just, I'm just saying now, I'm putting my bets down that Joe's gonna be one of the most powerful Green Lanterns of all time. I'm also so ready to see her and Hal Jordan go toe to toe. That is a fight slash team up I cannot wait to read. And if you missed that, that clash of things, that was from Future State Green Lantern issue number two. It's the last story in there and woo, love that story. Number four, Sodom Yacht. Sodom Yacht is a Daxamite, an alien race who is similar in terms of abilities, powers, and physiology to Superman's race, the Kryptonians. So basically Sodom Yacht is like if Superman were a Green Lantern in terms of how much natural power he packs. Sodom Yacht was also given a rare opportunity to bond with Ion. Ion is the creature within the Green Lantern battery, similar to Parallax with its tie to the Yellow Lanterns or Sinestro Core, obviously, but not inherently evil like Parallax was, as Ion doesn't feed on fear. I believe only two characters have ever been known to bond with Ion, and Sodom Yacht was one of them. Also, if you're confused about Ion and the whole creatures thing, it's a whole thing. I'm not really gonna get into it, but basically each different type of lantern, each color has their own creature. It's a whole thing. Number three, Kyle Rayner. Kyle Rayner is a favorite for many fans, and we all know him as the lantern who is able to tap into the powers of the White Lanterns, which is pretty cool. But did you know that his connection to the emotional spectrum actually extends out beyond even just becoming a White Lantern? And did you know that it was Kyle himself who through his own willpower pushed through to explore the ultraviolet range. He actually pursued becoming a White Lantern in order to put a stop to the corrupted guardians of the universe and along the way unlocked the full range of the emotional spectrum. Meaning that Kyle isn't just a great Green Lantern, but can also be a great Lantern of any other color besides, because he is so in tune with all of his emotions. Which of course means he isn't maybe the most powerful Green Lantern, but he's definitely the most powerful in general, all around. We get to see him grow all around as a hero in the New 52 New Guardian series. So if you're wanting to check out that journey, check that series out. He also is one of the very few lanterns to bond with Ion, the Green Lantern Batteries creature. And their bond is mutual, meaning that both lend one another strength and power. So yeah, him and Sodom Yat, and I'm pretty sure 
Pretty sure that's it. Number two, Jon Stewart. Jon Stewart has to be high up on our list just for all the insane constructs he's managed to create. At one point, his ring actually told him that his willpower was greater than it could even process. So we are talking off the charts willpower, which has helped Jon to stand out by accomplishing some pretty mighty tasks. Something else that I love about Jon Stewart is just the reasoning behind abandoning his mask. John isn't just strong of will, but he's also strong when it comes to his courage in revealing his true identity to the world. He does not wear a mask because he wants to be seen and he wants other people of color to know that they too can be a hero like him. And I love that. Number one, Hal Jordan. There might be some weird stuff going on with Hal right now, but it's pretty much guaranteed that we'll all consider him to be one of the strongest Green Lanterns around for as long as Green Lanterns exist in comics. When it comes to Hal Jordan, the thing that makes him stand out above all others is his willpower, which is, you know, kind of the main thing you need as a Green Lantern. One time after he died, his willpower was so strong, he managed to resurrect himself. You know you are crazy powerful when you can just like, will yourself back to life. That is some Jean Grey levels of power. And even though he was possessed by Parallax at the time, it was still Hal who was responsible for destroying the central battery on Oa and for killing the entire core, which is obviously awful. It's I'm not saying it's a good thing, but still, it's a really insane and kind of impressive feat, I think. That's crazy. Hal just was like, boom, you're all gone. Woo! What are some of your favorite Green Lantern Corps members? Who do you think are some of the most powerful recruits? Are there any old lanterns that you would like to see brought back? Or any ideas for new lanterns you'd like to see introduced? Let us know in the comments below. Also, much, much love to all of our Guy Gardner fans out there. Hopefully we get to do a part two because that is another powerful Green Lantern I'd love to talk about, among others that have been unmentioned here. So yes, Guy Gardner fans, I see you, I hear you. I want to also celebrate Guy Gardner. I just, I didn't have enough spots. <laughs> it's so hard sometimes when I have only 10 spots and I'm like, oh, there's definitely more than 10 people that deserve to be on this list, but that's all right. We'll save Guy Gardner for another time. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I am your host, Amanda McKnight, saying thank you so, so much for watching and reminding you as always to stay nerdy, YouTube. <laughs>